can't afford a truck driver to come out here to these races, so me and my friends did a road trip from Fremont, California out to Texas, and we had multiple breakdowns. Our trailer lost an axle, and we were stranded out there for about 21 hours. There was a, a nice Texas local who was driving by and said, hey, I have a trailer for sale if you guys want it. I said, that would be huge. Like, I, I will trade trailers with you right now because I have a race in two days in Austin, Texas. If I leave right now, I'll barely get there on time. I rolled up here Tuesday at midnight, unloaded Wednesday morning, and we're here. And hopefully we're fighting for a top five today. Because of the brake failure, we ended up off track quite a bit and uh, couldn't make the apexes. We had to replace a brake line, so luckily Toyota is here on site and they were able to provide us with a new one. After qualifying, I started 30th place. All eyes on the flag stand as there goes the green and we are racing here in Austin. We've already got contact coming down into one. Starting in the back, uh, you got to be pretty cautious on the start, but at the same time, that's when everybody's the closest and the most jumbled up. You just got to take what's given to you and not really put your car in jeopardy for anything bad to happen. I was able to get through the first few laps scot-free and just kept picking them off one by one from there. Let's draw a little attention here. Tyler Gonzalez in 15th position, already up double digits, 12 spots. Remember, he's starting to back of the grid here. Your two-time winner from Sonoma, he is working his way forward. I know by lap two, I was up to 14. Well, he's working on getting his way back to the front, and that's exactly what we focus on here at this point, making a big move down to the inside of Steven Clements, going down into turn 15, and makes it work. My goodness gracious, Tyler Gonzalez not to be denied here today. There's the 23 car of Tommy McCarthy. He's got the 76 of Stephen Clemens right behind him. Oh, that's Stephen Clemens. There's another car off to the inside. I believe that's Tommy McCarthy. Cars off, drivers right, drivers left. There's one car stopped on track. So there's definitely been some contact there at the top of the hill. I think that that car for Clemens just hit at exactly the wrong angle. We had a very fast car, but we had we struggled to find some clean air. We moved up to eighth place. I was hugging the S's and I went in a little too on the inside and I went right into the guy next to me and I bounced off him and then went into the inside wall. I, I had talked to him after the race and I apologized because it was kind of a risky move for that stage of the race. Elbows are out and through comes the 57 of Tyler Gonzalez still trying to pick up spots while he can, get edging closer and closer to the top five. He takes a big lunge in turn 14 and Tyler Gonzalez is on a mission. He is messaging home to Houston because that car is a rocket ship from the back of the field up into fifth place. He is coming for a podium. Oh, it's going to be three wide coming down through turn 10, and that is Tyler Gonzalez taking full advantage. That was the latest of the late breakers. Gresham Wagner, after what has to be called a little bit of a rough run there in Sonoma, is going to come across the line as the checkered flag flies and take victory for Tech Sport Racing. I just burnt up my tires trying to get through the whole pack. I knew on the restart he was in about 7th or 8th, so I knew he, he was going to get up there, and I was thinking it'd either be a blessing or a curse, right? He'd either, you know, get up there and battle with those guys and give me a cushion, or he'd get past them quickly and run up to the back of me. I'm glad we finished second. I think we ended up passing 27 cars. We were here last fall for the Formula One race. She was so enamored by the drivers and the track. Just her excitement is so great to see doing this. I have to go someplace alone. So I don't want to be in the pit. I don't want to have a radio on. I like to have a little bit of space because I'm kind of panicked. I get more nervous than she does. I definitely feel his energy, but I know that I just have to keep it cool. But as soon as you start driving, you just forget everything else. Seeing our cars, you know, when we were developing this program, it's just really exciting to see kind of your baby out in the world a little bit. To see everything come together has been great and to go to these iconic tracks and have the experience with a bunch of amateur drivers to participate in these, these formats has been fantastic. I'm Spike Kobecker. I've been racing since I was four years old. My grandpa got me into racing. He was a car collector. We raced uh, out of the back of grandma's SUV. We put the go-kart in the back and drive around our local track. I'm in a good championship battle right now. I really don't like to focus on championship. I like to focus on every turn, every apex, and every acceleration. What I love about this form, and again, we're talking about 
the diversity of drivers that we have, and diverse in terms of their capabilities. You have a race, but then you have many races within the race. Tyler Gonzalez has established himself as a real force to be reckoned with. But we've got Spike in there, going door to door every lap, but then back in the field, you, you want to see, you know, the race is going there. That's what people love, the personalities. They love seeing the emotion. And I think we're seeing that week in and week out. A little bit of precipitation starting to fall from the skies, and that's going to really change things up. And Kyle, that's going to make me really focus in on one driver in particular that uh, put in a fantastic qualifying run here. Cat Lauren in the 09 Precision Racing LA car, putting that car up into third place. And I think if this rank continues to come down, Cat is going to be one you have to circle big time. It was a really good call made by the team to go on the sticker tires. I was sitting in pit lane and I was like, everyone's on rain tires. This is not going to be good, but track dried up and so I was able to get a good lap in, but just got made a right call. As there goes the green and we are racing here in Austin, Texas. Tyler Gonzalez cutting through the corner there. We've got one Whoa, car around the back. The 76 car, Stephen Clemens sideways and there's more in the background as you called it there, DJ. Now up into turn number eight on the paint. There's not going to be grip there. They touch. The 57 spins in turn eight. And that is your championship leader, Tyler Gonzalez. He's able to catch the car and get it pointed back the right way, but not, not without losing many, many positions. He's going to be falling down through the order here, and he is going to have to play catch up. The track was a little slick, and it just rained. The whole field was out there on slicks on a wet, drying surface. I was started eighth or ninth. We were racing up the field. I was up in the front of the pack and made some contact, and I ended up dropping way back down the order. and with a pretty heavily damaged car, which I was able to race my way back up to third. That's the 09 machine, Cat Lauren, who we talked about at the beginning of the race, finding themselves in a battle right now with Mia Lovell. Final lap at Circuit of the Americas. It looks like it's going to be very, very close. How is this going to play? Turn number 19, Kemper slipping sideways here into turn 19. He has a big moment, and here comes Spike Kohlbecker. Kohlbecker looking for the opportunity. Another big moment there for Drake Kemper as they come out of the corner. Kemper's going to shut the door. There's going to be a little bit of front to rear contact, almost pushing him out of turn 20, as it's going to be Drake Kemper coming to the line to take the checkered flag. Tyler Gonzalez with a move as they come across the line. Lauren slipping and sliding, sliding and slipping as they come out of the corner, and it's Cat Lauren by the merest of margins. That was absolutely fantastic stuff. Spike, I just told you that you didn't even know that the leader had a penalty, so you thought you were going for that win. When did you actually find out that this was your victory? Uh, right here, like 30 seconds ago. Huge thanks to the fans watching back at home in St. Louis, Missouri, and all around the world. Coming from Kota, we knew that we were lacking a little pace. And I've never raced VIR before. Qualified fifth the first day, seven or eight tenths off pole, so it was still quite a ways of time that we had to make up. Weisenberg still got overlap here for the left-hander into NASCAR Ben. Will Rogers holds off Gonzalez for second place for the time being. By lap one, we were up in fourth. Lap two, we got third. So we were in the top two by, by lap five. The big beneficiary of all of that battling was Lucas Weisenberg there in that number 46 machine as he continues to press ahead. Whoa, for second place, here comes Weisenberg around the outside of Gonzalez into turn one, door to door, as Wagner continues to keep them in the rear view. They're banging fenders as they head through Horseshoe. Gresham, Wagner had a two and a half second lead. We caught him with 17 minutes to go. Coming onto the white flag lap, he passed me and got me on the straightaway. It may be a bull on the side there of the number five machine, but it is Lucas Weisenberg that is seeing red, trying to make his way around the outside of Horseshoe. He's going to dive the car in deep. Gresham Wagner has the preferred line, banging doors there as they come down through the corner. Side by side, Weisenberg doing a phenomenal job around the outside at Horseshoe. What an unbelievable move. Can he re-clear Wagner through turn two and into turn three? He does. And I uh, went around the outside of him in turn one and held it all the way to the finish. He's going to come to the line to take the checkered flag. Lucas Weisenberg, your winner from race wow. one at BIR. It was our first win. So it was definitely a hard fought race. My best drive, I think, ever. And uh, it paid off. We won the race. It was uh, definitely a cool, cool weekend. Lucas has been doing great all season. I think he's fourth in the championship right now. Uh, 
He should be right there uh, to take over the third spot, and he's right there in the championship, so of course I'm watching him. He's a, he's a great competitor. That was huge for him. Perseverance and, and, and practice and, and keeping digging on the setup and tweaking it for him, you know, he was able to get up there and run with the best of them and win at VIR. That was the first time we've ever been to Virginia Raceway. We are practicing, it's such a big track. It was actually raining heavily on turn one and the rest of the track was sunny. So I was coming around on slicks. I broke early and I hit a puddle and I just went straight off and went into a wall and stuffed the front end a little bit. It just set us off on the wrong foot for the race weekend. Sunday was a brand new race at Virginia. We woke up for qualifying. I came around for our flyer lap and started cutting out. So we qualified pretty far back for Sunday race and we were coming through the pack and we got caught up in a lot of carnage coming through. So the 23 ended up in the wall. Uh, there was some contact back here and some cars running wide and just got off track, slip slid and into the wall. The McCarthy team had a, a little bit of an unfortunate incident, but they stuck around and went and helped out some of their friends. So it really shows how much of a family atmosphere we've got within this series. It's really impressive to watch. Even though I won at Coda, it wasn't my best race. Virginia, I think, was really my best race. But uh, I led for quite a few laps and had a great battle and really felt that I was on it, doing everything I can do to prepare off the track and, uh, and on the tracks. And I really felt like I did that at Virginia, even though I didn't finish on the podium. Three abreast, Spike Kohlbecker sneaks up on both of them. Could he take the lead away? He does. Spike Kohlbecker clears both of them. They touch nose to tail. Kohlbecker and Gonzalez banging bumpers. Kohlbecker not giving him an inch. He dips a tire off into the grass. Kohlbecker is going to go off into the outside. He's not going to be able to gather it up back up underneath him. That grants the position over to Gresham Wagner, and Will Robusto will sneak on by into P3. Disaster for the 55 on the last lap of this race, but for the 57 of Tyler Gonzalez, two wins at Sonoma and DJ race two and VIR looks like it's his. We've finished on the podium every race so far. We've won three of them. Race wins are great, podiums are great, but we're here for the long run. Championship is what's on our mind. This is a new experience for all of us drivers, to drive at night in a street circuit. This is not a very forgiving track. The key to street circuits is just precision. You gotta hit all of your marks and stay out of the walls at the same time. 